Good morning, everyone. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made here in July, and uh, God is good all the time. And we welcome you to Grace Community Church of God here in Cleveland, Tennessee. Many have gathered here in the family room. We still have the social distance seating out, and you're still welcome to wear your mask and, and all of that. So we want people to be safe as we worship God together. I love that word together. And uh, those of you who are joining us online, we want to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth as we always do. And I was reminded of the psalmist, what he said in Psalm 63. He said, Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Thus will I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. And my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. I hope you've come today to join with the psalmist and realize that God's loving kindness is even better than life. Because without that, what is life? Right? It's empty. But God is with us. And so we invite you to stand as we worship Him with this exciting song simply taken from Psalm 63 that says, Better than life. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. His love is everlasting. Let's sing about His love and His plan. If you're ready, let's sing. Here we go. Love is everlasting. It's an everlasting love. Mercy is as near as every rising of the sun. For your love and kindness, love and kindness is better than life. It's an all-sufficient grace. Your power and your glory are forever of this place. And your loving kindness, loving kindness is better than life.
Pentecostal believers, we believe that as we praise the Lord right here, we are joining with those that are around the throne even now. They cast their crowns before Him. We're nothing before Him. Whatever title we may have earned, when we come into the presence of the Lord, God, we're nothing. We cast that crown upon you. Lord, in humility, we're not worthy. But here's what they say with a loud voice. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and even under the earth, such as are in the sea and all them that are in them, I heard say, blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. The creatures in the sea. You ever been to the aquarium? I, I want to go revisit the aquarium. I think it's back open because I just love the animals and, and we don't ever get a glimpse underneath the sea, not often enough anyway. And there's some beautiful fish. How I many know there's some ugly fish? Yeah. I love to eat grouper, but they're, they're ugly to me. But you know what? They bring him pleasure. Yes. And just swimming around, they are bringing honor and glory to him who sits on the throne. The four living creatures said, Amen. The 24 elders fell down and worshipped him who lives Forever, ever, ever. Casey, you lead us as we are in the presence of the Lord and we worship Him today.
is in very, very bad condition and they have uh, called hospice and so on. And so uh, let us pray God's grace to be with Tilda. Uh, James Hicks continues to need our prayers. Let's pray for James. And also Gail Bigham continues to need our prayers as well. There are many, many others uh, throughout our church that have one need or another. And God knows uh, what those are. So let's pray right now and believe Jesus instructed us. Uh, and he said to his disciples this strange uh, kind of thing. He said, here, up till now, you've asked nothing in my name. Ask. Don't be afraid to ask your Heavenly Father. Be bold in your prayers. Is that what the writer of Hebrews said? Come boldly. That means confidently to the throne of grace. Come boldly to the throne of grace that you obtain, might obtain mercy and find grace to help. Don't come timidly and, 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 and half-heartedly. Come boldly to God, not in pride or not that we deserve it or that we've earned it, but boldly in the knowledge of God's grace. Do we really believe God loves us? Amen. I do. I believe he really does. And I believe he, that's why he said, ask and you shall receive. So let us come boldly to the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, we come to you today thanking you for your goodness, your mercy, your love. Lord, we praise you for these beautiful songs. We praise you for the scriptures on which they're based. We praise you for every person that is here in your house today, waiting on you, hoping in you, worshiping you, glorifying you. Lord, there is no better thing to do on the face of the earth than to magnify the name of the Lord, the King of the world, the King of the universe, the God who created us, the God who saved us, the God who has delivered us, the God who is ever with us. And Lord, we thank you for your glory that is filled up our, our house today, Lord. We thank you for your holy presence. And we believe, Lord, that as we pray right now throughout this congregation, that there are many needs. And so we voice those needs to you, Lord. You know what they are. We voice those needs to you. And we believe, Lord, that you hear our prayers, that you are honored by our faith, that as we come to you in faith, that you are pleased to do unto your children something good, that it pleases you to hear and answer our prayers. It, it is a joy to you to come and give us what we need. That you are disappointed when we don't pray. You're disappointed when we don't bring our needs. You're disappointed when we don't call out to you. Because as the psalmist says, Pastor Kevin Red, Oh God, you are our God. Early we will seek after you. You are our God. And so we believe today, Lord, that you will touch Tilda and James and Gail, and that you will lift them up, that you will strengthen them, that you will give them peace, that you will give them hope, that you will give them joy in the midst of their affliction, joy in the midst of their valley, that you will bring them through. Bring them through this valley, Lord. Bring them through, O oh God, and walk with them. Hold their hand. Lift them up, Lord. And we thank you, God. Thank you, God, that we can lean on you, that we can call on you. And today, Lord, let us hear from heaven in, as Pastor Kevin preaches the word. Let him be anointed by the Holy Spirit to preach the good news that Jesus saves. And we praise you, Lord. Thank you for hearing our prayers today. Thank you for answering our prayers. God, we give you all the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good to see everyone this morning. Amen. We've come to that time to bless the Lord with our tithes and offering. We thank you for continuing to give. Uh, I believe we still have the options to give online if you want to do that. And, uh, we're getting back. What was that word we used a couple weeks ago? Traditional. 
instead of old fashioned. We're going back to a little bit traditional, taking up the offering. Brother Tim, get ready. You're going to come up, brother. Kids, uh, when we see you today, if you've got anything for the uh, to put in the Jesus jar, you're welcome to come up during that. And you were doing such a good job. Oh, you get to sing for us? Yeah. All right. I'm getting older. they got to get those big words. I see that. I see that. <laughs> hey, y'all. It is a delight to be here. Because it's been so long since we've been able to do this. And uh, it just, it works good, you know? I like to see everybody, and people like to put their tithe and offering in this thing. And some people still give on Givelify, and we love that. Givelify is very simple and effective, and uh, you don't have to be here, but we like you to be here. And some folks give on give the five while they're being here. So that's all a good thing. And it's all for the continuance of the gospel of Jesus. I was, I was reading this morning that, uh, in fact, there's a question I have for Dr. Martin about the abomination of desolation. And we'll ask that later. <laughs> but it was talking about, are we in the last days? Is this the time that we should really be certain that we know in our heart, we know in our knower that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. We confess with our mouth that he is Lord. And the promise is, we'll be with him in heaven someday. And Giving in the tithe and offering is just another outward expression of our faith in Jesus Christ. And so give out of a faithful heart, not out of guilt or shame or any of that. Just give unto the Lord out of a faithful heart. Father, thank you this morning for your graciousness to us. And bless the gift and the giver as we gather the offering and tithe this morning. And we give you praise. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Tim, this song's called Heaven's Jubilee. You're welcome to stand and say it, but just help me sing it. Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air. Coming after you and me, joy and eyes we share. What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise.
Jeremy. Amen. Yay, he circles D, all the above. He helps us in so many ways. I just appreciate his heart and his love for the Lord and love for us. He does a lot of things around here on the property and others do, which reminds me that this Saturday, if you can help us male and female, no one is excluded. Uh, you know, one of the things we pray, uh, praise the Lord for is just a, such a beautiful 7.2 acres and facilities. But uh, we've got a couple of areas that really need attention on this property. And I can't do it by myself, and I need some help. So um, we were, I, I was over at uh, Randy and Denise's, and, and we were talking, and Ricky was there, and Judy, and we were talking about uh, some of the things. And they said, well, Pastor, let's have a work day. So Saturday at 8.30, if you can help us, uh, there's a couple of things. Uh, Ricky, are you going to bring your tiller? Ricky's going to bring his tiller. We need to till the playground area, the mulch. It's kind of settled and stuff, and we need to, uh, to, to do that. We may need to bring some more in. And also, when we are, are mowing the property, uh, the more that we have has a protection roll bar on it, and the canopy of all these trees, they're getting so low. And uh, Fred, you mow, Tim, you mow, Jeremy, you, uh, Jim, uh, others, and uh, I mowed, almost took my eye out one day and, 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 and did pop the wheelie on that thing because the branch caught that roll bar. And we need to lift the canopy. So if you have a pole saw or a chainsaw, we can go around and do that, and uh, then we just if we get all that sticks and stuff to the road, that will help us. At least those two things. Somebody can help me. I'm going to get up here and we clean up these gutters uh, on the top, and it'll, the more the merrier. It'll, it'll go pretty quick. And so Saturday at 8:30, if you can help us, if you can only help us for part of the time, that is great. But uh, praise the Lord. Don't you sense the presence of the Lord? I look forward to heaven one day. He was singing about heaven's jubilee. wasn't long ago we were watching a video and it had uh, my brother-in-law Matt Willits and it had mom and dad Willits and it had Meemaw in there and granddaddy and, and we were watching and we were just laughing and I realized something after it had played and after it was finished and we had laughed along. It, it dawned on me that it didn't seem like it had been years since I've seen some of those people. It seemed like, man, I haven't seen them in a couple of weeks. And you know what I think when we get to heaven? It's just going to be that way. What a family reunion. There's going to be a marriage supper of the Lamb. You talk about a family reunion to end all family reunions, right? And, and to begin the, uh, the greatest one. And uh, won't that be wonderful? But until then, we're still here in a fallen, broken world, doing life. And, uh, you know, a few weeks ago, I had uh, shared with this congregation that uh, the Lord revealed to me the heaviness that I was feeling and experiencing, experiencing wasn't really just a spiritual attack. It was, though, uh, because I was grieving. You know, anytime there's a sense of loss, people grieve. It's a natural response. The last year and a half, I've even talked with, with some, I'm not going to call them names, I've talked with some who still don't feel comfortable being out in public. They go to the grocery store or the doctor with the mask on. And, I mean, I, I miss seeing them. We grieve the losses of uh, being able to connect with people. We grieve the losses of the death of loved ones, of friends. Uh, we grieve the loss of many who, you know, have lost their job or their business hasn't been doing it as, as good now. Even though it seems like we're through a lot of the uh, difficulties of the of the pandemic, mostly I think because we're learning how to uh, manage it and deal with it like we do other things like the flu and but there's just so much of life in these last days. And, and the Lord uh, shared with me that it wasn't just me, but certainly others have been experiencing grieving and the body of Christ as a whole. I mean, there have been funerals this year we couldn't even go to. There have been people who have been in the hospital. We couldn't even get in to see them. 
right? Um, and so, uh, my response as a pastor is, how do you lead congregation through a process of healing and comfort and encouragement? Well, the good news is, God has given us His Word. He's given us His Holy Spirit. He's given us one another to help us on this journey. And so, the sermons, at least the last few that I have shared, have been along those lines of response to encourage the heart, bring comfort and healing and wellness and encouragement to the hearts of God's people. We talked about how God's presence, He's God in the darkness. Remember that? It's not always a bright, sunny day that we associate the presence of God, but sometimes God's presence is revealed even in the darkness, the dark cloud. He's God in the fire. We looked at that. Sometimes the, the, the things of life, it feels like we're heated up. We're in the heat of things. But God is there. And uh, we talked about the name of Jesus. Is it the name of Jesus? wonderful and beautiful and powerful and he's all we need encouragement brother tim preached on father's day and 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 last week on the fourth of july we talked about our freedom in christ and how that while we're independent from tyranny and british rule why the united states was was uh, uh, established as its own country but as believers we don't ever want to be independent from God, but we want to be dependent upon Him because the more dependent upon Him we are, just as children, Jesus said, unless you become as one of these children, He's not talking about acting childish, but He's talking about in our faith, we just trust our Heavenly Father that He's good. As Dr. Martin reiterated and exhorted us today, God is good and He loves us and He's with us. And so today, I'll be honest with you, um, it's kind of gone a little bit of a different direction, but Lord willing, it may turn into, we, we may continue next week, but, but we'll see. But today, I just want to invite your attention to where the Lord brought me in Philippians 4.4. 4. The Apostle Paul simply records these words. Rejoice in the Lord always, again, I will say, rejoice. Can we read that together? Let's read it together. Here we go. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I will say, rejoice. Now what's amazing is the Apostle Paul isn't writing these words from a Hawaiian vacation. <laughs> you know, when things are going good and, 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 and the bills are paid and we're feeling good and you know, we're uh, many, many pictures on Facebook today, you know, people at the beach and on vacation. You know, it's good to say, well, we're Jewish in the Lord anyway, right? But Paul is writing these words from a Roman prison. We know when we read the letters of Paul, he's been beaten since he's living his life for Christ, since his conversion, for, uh, living his life for the gospel of Christ. He's been beaten, he's been in prison, he's been challenged, he's been confronted, and yet, even in the walls of a prison, he will write, rejoice in the Lord always, again I will say, rejoice. Wow. He'll write in just a couple of verses later, words that, that we often hear and quote, in verses 6 and 7, he says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything. Somebody say everything. everything. Oh, man, where the rubber meets the road. In everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. We just did that a few moments ago on behalf of, of one another, on behalf of other needs that we know. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So evidently, you know, Amber, if you need to see Amber because your body is hurting, with her medical expertise, she can write you a prescription. But when we open this book, the Apostle Paul gives us a prescription. Right? 
And so a prescription for anxiety, according to the Apostle Paul, must begin with a call to rejoice. But how can we obey a command like rejoice always? And he even repeats it. Again, I say rejoice. Yeah, but Paul, you don't know what I'm going through right now. Paul, what if, if you were experiencing what's going on with my job right now, you would think twice about encouraging these words. No. He says, rejoice. Always. Again, I say rejoice. But Paul, there's diseases. There's death. There's disappointments. How can anyone maintain an interrupted spirit of blessing? Well, let's look closer at these words. They're still up there that we just read. Rejoice in the Lord always. It might not feel good, the situation, the circumstance. Yes, it hurts. I'm sorry that's touched your life. I really am. I wish I could wave a magic wand and just relieve all tension and all pressure and all illness and and all the negative stuff that touches people's life. You know, Jesus knew what he was talking about when he said, in this world you're going to have tribulation. But he also said, be of good cheer, for I've overcome the world. And that's what the Apostle Paul is talking about. Rejoice, not in the situation in and of itself, but in the Lord always. Right? This is not a call to a feeling. Rejoice always. He says rejoice in the Lord. This is a call to a decision and a deeply rooted confidence in God. In who God is. In Yahweh. That God exists. Do you believe that God exists? Do you believe that God is omnipotent? That He is in total control? Do you believe that God is good? I do too. So, so that's why the Apostle Paul is saying, no matter what your situation, think about who God is and rejoice in the Lord always because He's with us, right? Because He's promised you, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. When you pass through, I'm going to be with you. So in that situation, yes, believer, there is a peace of God that passes all understanding. The world looks at us and says, you're crazy. No, remember our bands? We're not, faith that, we're not faking it, we're faith in it. And our faith in God is real. There's nothing more real than our faith in God who is with us in spirit right now, whose word is eternal and is, is, is forever settled in heaven. And we build our life upon that. Because one's belief will always precede one's behavior. You've heard me say it. People really, they live what they truly believe. The rest of it is just gibberish. How many know? You've heard the phrase, talk is cheap. But what people really believe, they'll live. But we even struggle. We even struggle with that, especially when it comes to the things of God. I don't know why, but we're, we just leak. <laughs> you get up, you, your, your kids don't feel like going to school, but you make them go to school. You don't feel like going to work, but you go to work. Except for him, because he's retired now, and he keeps rubbing the <laughs> he said he sits his log clock every morning at 6 o'clock just so he can say, I don't feel like going to work and hit it and go off. And he sends Janice off. <laughs> Why do we do that? Because we believe that if we go to work, we'll earn a paycheck and be able to provide for ourselves, for our families, and other things and enjoy. I love what Dr. Charles Stanley said. He said, uh, concerning money, he said, earn it honestly, invest it wisely, give it generously, and enjoy it. You know, we, we're, we're just managers of this thing. But, but we believe that this is the Word of God. We believe that God exists, that He's good, and that He is in control. 
We, be, we, we believe that it's good together with, but, but sometimes we just have a hard time fleshing that out because other things come up. And Well, I, I didn't come here to meddle today, but to encourage. <laughs> but the songs we sang were based on a couple of scriptures. And I believe that the best way to change a person's response to life is to change what a person believes about life. To change the way a person responds to life, change what a person believes about life. We must trust the sovereignty of God. And when we do, we can experience the peace of God. And we can rejoice in the Lord always. And repeat it. There's probably a rule in language that this is not just, okay, rejoice, rejoice today, and then you're done. No, it's a continual encouragement. Rejoice in the Lord always and keep rejoicing. Again, I want to encourage you. Rejoice in the Lord. Yeah, but Paul, you, if you only felt what I felt, I understand. I'm sorry about that, but rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Think about who God is. He's with you, isn't he? He hadn't left you. Don't you believe he's still working? Amen. So, you, so rejoice. Sovereignty is a term used to describe, uh, to, to describe God's perfect control and management of the universe and eternity. The word sovereign means supreme power. Now there are other sovereigns, uh, kings, governments, you know, that, that are referred to as sovereign. They have a certain amount of endowed power. But, but, but listen to this preacher. Absolute sovereignty belongs to only one, and that is God and God alone. And he's always working. And God is always involved with all that he's created, directing to them to function in ways that fulfill his purpose and his will. We just sing about it in Revelation. And for thy pleasure they are created. Thou art worthy, O God. So my prayer is God help me to rest. In this truth. Help me to rest in the fact that you're sovereign. Anxiety, however, is the fruit of perceived chaos. If we sense that we're victims of unseen and turbulent random forces, we become troubled. You know, there was a study done, and I'm going to, you know, y'all get on Facebook a lot, and you can keep up with people when they're on Facebook, right? Especially sometimes. I don't, I don't always, you might not always see me respond to Facebook because I don't, and I choose to not. Because I know that once you hit send, <laughs> it's out there. And sometimes I'll send private messages to people in response to what they posted, but I don't, I just don't throw everything out, but I just don't feel comfortable doing that, right? And because uh, you can't take it back. <laughs> and it's not that I fear that I'm going to say something that's not faithful or truthful. I just, that, that's just the way I operate. But there was a study done that proved that when people feel that they're in control, it creates a calm. There was a study done in World War II that the soldiers on the ground felt so much more anxiety than those than the uh, fighter pilots because the fighter pilots had their hands on a control and they were they could control more of their destiny they felt like it but on the ground bomb you know is there a is there a landmine somewhere is there is, some, is there anything behind the bush that we can't see and and the anxiety but but you don't have to be in a war to understand that there was a study done that that, that uh, uh, traffic jams harm the heart. Can I get a witness? Amen. Did you hear the amen? Because there's somebody that posted on Facebook this week about being stuck in traffic. 
Brother Jeremy, <laughs> we love you, brother. You were stuck in traffic. I can't remember exactly what you said, but it, it, it was a struggle for you, wasn't it? Get me out of here. And yet, you know, uh, Alan uh, Moses, not Moses in the Bible, but Alan Moses, M-O-Z-E-S, he led a team of researchers and found that a traffic jam increases your chances of a heart attack threefold. Can you imagine that? Simply because you're stuck and you can't control it. Now, I have to confess, and Denise can confirm to you that I talk to other drivers. <laughs> I know they can't hear me, but I gotta let it out because <laughs> it just something bottles up within me. And and you know, to me, the worst part about flying in an airplane is driving to the airport. You know, it's just I, I'm serious. And and I, I probably shouldn't use this word, but you know, I just I just. Stupid bother. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and when people act that way, you know, even if you don't speak, but don't put everybody else's life in day, you know, right. or, or just doing crazy things and, 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 and all of that stuff. But, but I am learning. There are actual times that I get stuck in, in traffic and I just, I just whisper a prayer, Lord God, whatever you're trying to teach me here, <laughs> let me learn quickly. <laughs> You've been, anybody ever been stuck in a traffic jam beside me and Jeremy? Yeah. We all have. <clears throat> but how many know that there's so much about life that we really can't control? We might can start how, we might can control how we start the day. Good morning, Lord. This is the day you've made. How, how do you want me to participate with you today? Thank you for life in Jesus. Lead me, direct me, guide me. At the close of the day, we can say, thank you, Lord, you got me through another day, and, and Lord, I just praise you that you're even watching over me and my family as we sleep. But there's so much in between, so much that other people do or don't do or, or say or not say and, and that we cannot control. <clears throat> you know, the most stressed out people in the world are control freaks. You know any control freak? Yeah. You know why they're, they're, they're always stressed out? It's because they, they always fail at what they most pursue. The more they try, the more they fail. And the more they try, the more they realize they can't control the world. Listen, we can't take control because control is not ours to take. Aren't you glad? Man, the pressure's off. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> Sometimes we just need to take the frozen salt and just, just let it go. You can't control it. Why are you anxious? Why are you worried about it? You can't control it. To worry about what you can control is even more ridiculous. If you can control it, pray about it. God, give me wisdom here. Control it. We can't control a lot of life, but there's some things that we can do. We can't run the world, but can't we entrust it to our sovereign God? We sang a, a little chorus as children. I think it's relevant even today. It's a good reminder when we get stressed out. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. I see Sherry Babyson today. He's got the little bitty baby in his hand. Don't you believe that? He's got you and me, brother, you and me, sister, in his hand. Do we believe that? I know it's a simple little kind of a ch childlike song, but it's the truth. It's what the Apostle Paul is saying. If you remember that God really does have 
the whole world in his hands and that he's in total control and that God is good and he has your best in mind. We can rejoice in the Lord even in the midst of chaos. Amen. Give the Lord a praise. That's all I right. need. So the next time we feel anxiousness uh, creeping up or we get caught in traffic, I know it's hard. I'm not saying it's easy. Let's just start singing, Lord, you've got the whole world in your hands and let us rest in that. Because the problem is, and again on Facebook, because people throw it out there, it seems that people rehearse the chaos of the world instead of the sovereignty of God. It's like even believe we forgot something. We forgot who it is that we're worshiping and who we serve. But that's what the Apostle Paul said even before Philippians 4 in verse 1. In chapter 1 he said, but I want you to know, brethren, he's talking to the church. I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out from the furtherance of the gospel. Wait a minute, you're in prison. You've been betrayed. You've been persecuted. You've been arrested and, and, and beaten. And, and, and you're saying it's actually turned out from the furtherance of the gospel. So it's good. So that it has become evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ. And most of the brethren in the Lord, having become confident by my chains, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Wow. Man, you can't fake this. This is real. This is real faith in action. That says, I don't like it. It's caused me pain. It's caused me hurt. And here I am in chains. But you know what? We said it before how, how, how Joseph uh, talked about when he'd betrayed, been betrayed by his brothers. He said, you sold me here, but God sent me here. Yeah, you guys have, have persecuted me and arrested me and beat me and imprisoned me. But I'm going to rejoice in the Lord always because He's using even this situation that is affecting the entire palace guard, that's affecting even the brothers who are on the outside. And they're more bold today than they were before. I don't know why it takes pandemics and trouble to stir us to action. It doesn't have to. But I think it does because we become so complacent. Because we become apathetic. But when, when pain touches, oh God, oh God. Let's not wait till then. The Apostle Paul will all even go on to say, there are troublemakers in the church. And there are, there are some preachers who are not faithful in the message of Christ. But he sums it all up in verse number 18. Again, he says, in this I rejoice, yes, and I will continue to rejoice. There's a lot we can't control, but here's some truth that we do know. Let me just give you a couple of verses, all right? There's, there's a gazillion. God has also highly exalted Jesus and given him a name which is above every name. It's a... Lift the name of Jesus above that trouble. Lift the name of Jesus above that disease. Lift the name of Jesus above that circumstance. Lift the name of Jesus. It's above every name. Amen. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. The Apostle Paul understand it. God helped him and Mendel to understand it and to live it. Proverbs 21 there is no wisdom or understanding or counsel against the Lord. The horse is prepared for the day of battle, but deliverance is of the Lord. Yes. There are other verses of Scripture. The enemy can plan whatever he wants to plan, but I want to tell you, my deliverance is not dependent upon what happens in Washington, D.C. My deliverance is dependent upon the God who sits on the throne today. Hallelujah. Daniel said it this way. All the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. God 
does according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. No one can restrain his hand or say to him, what have you done? We just need to get a glimpse of God today. Of who he really is. Isaiah, well, well, Hebrews says it this way. He upholds all things by the word of his power. You want to see just a glimpse of the power of God? I know I say this all the time, but it's just the truth. I know it's a cloudy day outside. Go look in the sun. God said, let there be light. There was light. It's the light of the universe. Next time we begin anxious, just look up the heavens of God, the word of your power. Isaiah said it this way. <laughs> this, I would have never thought about it, but this verse just jumped out at me. I kind of want to read it a little bit. The Lord will whistle for a fly that is in the farthest part of the rivers of Egypt and for the bee that is in the land of Assyria. I had a fly in my house the other day. I don't like flies. I have a fly swap. Denise has a fly swap. But she always calls me to use it. Bugs are okay outside, but when they come inside, war's on, right? But just get a glimpse of this. God can call for a single fly or a bumblebee over in Egypt to fulfill his will. Fly. <laughs> I mean, that's just the way it struck me. <laughs> Dr. Martin, maybe I'm taking this out of context. I don't know, but it just, when you think about who God is, that even a fly and a bee is at his command in the farthest parts of the world. All God has to do is whistle and a bee will come. Wow. <laughs> Lamentation. Woe is he who speaks and it comes to pass. Who is he? I'm sorry, let me, let me. Who is he who speaks and it comes to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? How many know there's a lot of loudmouths out there in the world today? Yeah. The devil's not the biggest one. Well, if you don't do it this way, well, if you fall down and worship me, then I will do. Who is he who speaks and it comes to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? Is it not from the mouth of the Most High that both woe and well-being proceed? He really does have the whole world in his hand. We sang a song earlier based upon Isaiah 6 and Isaiah's vision of God. In a moment, wrap it up with this thought. Because I believe what the Lord is showing me, Pastor Kevin, for you and for others and for the body of Christ, if they will get a fresh glimpse of who I am, they will be able then to not be anxious. In their grieving process, find comfort and healing, encouragement and strength. And he brought me here. In the year that King Uzziah died, King Uzziah was a pretty good king until he went into the temple and he started acting like a priest. And, and that was forbidden by God. God put leprosy on him and, and, and he died. We're not going to get into all of that. But in the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah writes, I saw the Lord sitting high on a throne high and lifted up, and the train of his robe uh, filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim, each one having six wings, with two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one cried to the another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with his glory. I really thought we were going to talk about the glory of the Lord and, and the whole earth both the physical earth and our bodies that are made of the earth about the glory of the Lord. And, and we may revisit that. But, 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 but in this story, what the Lord is saying, 
Uzziah's throne was empty, but God's throne was occupied. He was shown Isaiah. The king, Uzziah, is no longer on the throne, but let me give you a glimpse into heaven. I'm still on my throne. What he said. Hear him say that to us today. Yes, Uzziah's voice may be silenced, but God's voice was and is still strong. Because in verse number 8, he says, Also, I heard the voice of the Lord. Pastor Kevin, don't you know that coronavirus is still out there? Yes, I do. I'm not going to treat it flippantly. I'm going to walk in wisdom. But I also hear the voice of God. Don't you know that in the last days we're in them and we see this and we see the signs and the devil's working and the love of many is, is, is waxing cold. Yes, but God is still pouring out His Spirit like He said and He is still speaking. He is still on the throne. God, let us see you and let us hear one word from you today. And it is here, in my opinion, at least for me, that I am finding the confidence to rejoice in the Lord always. Dr. Martin said Psalm 34 was one of his favorite. I believe it's 34 that says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Did you hear that? I will bless the Lord at all times. No matter what happens, I'm going to bless the Lord. His praise is going to continually be in my mouth. And here's what I know about Kevin Mendel. I can't praise him and complain at the same time. Yes, that's going on. I don't like it. I don't understand it. Lord, I'm praying about this. But, but, but let me get a glimpse of you. And I'm going to praise you because I know you're going to bring us there. God calmed the fears of Isaiah not by removing the problem, but by revealing his sovereignty, his divine presence, and his power. When Isaiah was assured that God was and is alive on the throne and worthy of endless worship, his anxiety decreased. And I'm going to say that our anxiety, body of Christ, will also decrease as our understanding of God, our Heavenly Father, increases. So the next time the fear raises its head, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice in His sovereignty. Rejoice in His faithfulness. Remember what Isaiah also said in Isaiah 26. You will keep Him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because He trusts in you. What we're talking about. Think about who he is. Romans 1.25. He is the creator who is blessed forever. Hebrews 13 and 8. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Psalm 102.27. God is the same and his years will have no end. The world sees the problems of the world and they wring their hands because they don't have a solution. They don't know what they're going to do. But believers, we see the problems of the world and we bend our knees to a God who is God, who is sovereign because we trust Him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Denise, will you prepare? <clears throat> Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet. He was, he was a young man. I had the wonderful opportunity to study the book of Jeremiah under Dr. Martin's direction at the seminary. A young man. And, and he's a weeping prophet because it seems like the message of the Lord that, that the Lord gives him to send out is just not being received. And he gets weary at times. But the Lord reminded him, he said, look, you go, you be faithful because... When they reject that word, it's not your word, it's my word. When they reject that, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. Come on, somebody. Come on. <clears throat> but he's feeling overwhelmed. In chapter 3 of Lamentations, Jeremiah also wrote Lamentations. My soul has been rejected from peace. You ever felt that? I have forgotten happiness. 
So I say my strength is perished. So has my hope from the Lord. Remember my affliction and my wandering, the wormwood and bitterness. Surely my soul remembers and is bowed down within me. He's just saying, I've experienced life in this broken world, and sometimes it's hard. Come on, somebody. I'm not saying it's always easy. It's why we need the Word of God. You hear me say it all the time. Holy Spirit of God, and we need the, the, the people of God to be faithful, to encourage one another on our journey. But as Jeremiah lifted his thoughts to God, listen to his words. This I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. The Lord's loving kindnesses indeed never cease. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I have hope in him. The Lord is good to those that wait for him. To the person who seeks him. It is good that he waits silently for the salvation of the Lord. So yes, sometimes we get discouraged, but then, Sister Grace, I appreciate all the posts that you put on Facebook because they're always life-giving, the Word of God and Jan and others. Because we begin to think about who God is and we say, yes, His compassions never fail. Yes, this is hard. Yes, this is going on. But great is God's faithfulness. Therefore, I rejoice. Can't we trust what the Apostle Paul said in Romans 8, 28? And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. How many have ever read the, it's still July, Christmas in July. How many have ever seen the, uh, the movie, The Christmas Story? You know, the Red Rider and all that. And, and the kids in the schoolyard in the middle of winter, wherever that is, in Pennsylvania or somewhere up there. Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland, Ohio, Dr. Mark. <laughs> I dare you to do this. I double dog dare you. And then, <laughs> the all powerful, I triple dog dare you to stick your tongue to the frozen ball. And they did. Now, I'm not daring anyone to stick your tongue out to a frozen bowl. I think it would be another word that I use for it. <laughs> I do, however, in the name of the Lord, if a triple dog dare is what it takes, I triple dog dare you to stick your troubles to a sovereign God. Who is on the throne. Amen. Who never slumbers. Who never sleeps. Who knows exactly. Where you are. Rest in him. God help me. To rest. In your sovereignty. And then I will finish with the words of Jeremiah. Recorded in 17 verses 7 and 8. Bless is the man and the woman and the child. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when the heat comes, but its leaf will be green and it will not be anxious in the year of drought nor will cease. From you and me. So to that, as we stand together in this place, and those who are joining us online, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Not because God has removed every problem and every situation, every trouble, but that in the midst of that, God has revealed Himself omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. He's our sovereign God. And it's sweet to trust and rest in Him. 
as our prayer and encouragement. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the same. Saturday at 8.30. We look forward to seeing you. God bless you. You're dismissed.